So the last time uh, we were finished talking about, uh, just starting to talk about the net present value, but I had some questions about this slide, so I think I need to explain again. So uh, can you turn on the light, please? Can you turn on the light? So we can make a table here of the revenues and the general administration cost. One, two, three. Revenue is one thousand. So, uh, general administrative cost we said is fixed and variable. So what we're going to do is start from the end and work back. So we said that we have a 40% variable and 60% fixed. This was our answer in the end. So if we have 40% variable cost, this is the GNA, this is revenue, and here is of the GNA, we can split GNA up into variable and fixed. So how much of this 250 is a variable? What's 40% of 250? 100. Okay. What's 60% of 250? 150. 150. So our fixed cost is 150 in year one, and the variable cost is 100. So an example of fixed cost is the CEO salary, right? Let's pretend that doesn't change. An example of the variable cost is the company jet. Do you understand airplane jet? So Disney has their own private jet, okay? So we have to use this private jet more often because we have a theme park in Brazil, okay? So we have some variable costs. It means that because of the theme park, we have some extra cost. So what, how much is the fixed cost going to be in year two? Fixed cost doesn't change. Fixed cost is going to be the same. Okay, that's why it's the fixed cost. It's going to be the same, 150 in year two and year three. How much is the, is the variable cost going to be here? 120. How much is the variable cost going to be here? So we can see that the, C, the fixed part, the CEO salary stays the same. We have to pay 150 every time for the CEO salary. But as our revenue goes up, we have some variable. Do you understand variable beyond suit? Cost, like the company plane. The revenue is low, we visit one time a year. The revenue is higher, visit two times a year. Use the plane more often, the variable cost goes up. Okay? Uh, year three, the revenue goes up, variable cost goes up more. How much is the variable cost of the revenue? The variable cost goes up 20, the revenue goes up 200. The variable cost goes up 30, the revenue goes up 300. How much is the variable cost of the revenue? 10%, right? So the variable cost is going to be 10% of revenue. So this was the first thing we figured out. Okay? So we have general and administrative costs. How much does the general and administrative cost change when our revenue changes? It changes by 10% of what our revenue changes. So that's an important number. So once we know that, we figure that out, then we can find this number. Ten, if our variable cost is 10% of revenue, then in year one, we know that our variable cost is 100, okay, of 1,000. So then we put 100 over 250, 100 over 250, so we know this information, so we say what percent is the variable cost of the total? 
we know the total, and we know the percent variable cost. Then we can get our 40%. This is where we get our answer from. Okay? So we have to find out first what percent of our GNA cost is variable compared to our revenue. As our revenue changes, how much does the general and administrative cost change? Does that make sense? We see that the general and administrative cost is going up. If the general and administrative cost was always the same, then what would my this be? Variable of revenue. What percent would it be? What percent variable is it? And what percent fixed? If the general and administrative cost stays the same, even though my revenue goes up, what percent is fixed and what percent is variable? 100% in this case 100% will be fixed 0% variable that's just a fixed cost okay only the CEO salary there's no variable cost so we want to figure out how much is variable cost so if we put if we look at these numbers and relate them to the revenue we can figure out how much is the variable cost what percent the variable cost is compared to revenue and what percent the variable cost is compared to the total GNA cost. Okay. Do you have any question about this? So once we have that information, it's like the sum cost. Here we have the pre-project investment sum cost add back in. So instead of minus 2,500 cash flow, we have minus 2,000, two okay? For the fixed general and administrative cost, the CEO salary, we're going to be spending that money anyway, so it's like a sunk cost. We're not going to include in the project analysis. So if the first year we have 1,188, then we add back in our fixed, fixed uh general and administrative costs, $78. The next year we add back in. So our cash flow is going up. In, cash, in year four, the cash flow was 196. But my general and administrative fixed cost was 155, which I'm not going to count. So it makes a big difference. It changed to 332 in this year, okay? So my cash flow went from just 196 to 332. Why? For this project, we're not counting the general and administrative cost. Fixed one, the fixed one. In Disney, it seems to be quite high. They have to pay the salary of the CEO, the CMO, the CIO. Okay? But anyway, we have to pay that money. If we take the project or we don't take the project, do we still have to pay the fixed GNA? If we take the project or don't take the project, does it matter to the fixed GNA? No. No, right? Anyway, we have to pay the CEO salary, whether we do this project or not. Do you understand? We have to pay the rent for the head office. Do we still have to pay the rent for the head office, whether we do the project or not? No. Yes. So should we include that money when we're deciding whether to do the project? No. 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 Okay. Any it's the same as the sunk cost. Anyway, we're going to spend this money, don't include in the project. So we have to change this. This is our accounting returns, and we need to change our accounting returns to cash flow. Okay? So now we have a lot of things to change from accounting to cash flow. We have depreciation, we have uh, capital expenditures, we have working capital, we have uh, pre project investment, and finally, fixed general and administrative costs. So we add all of, or subtract these things to our operating income and we get cash flow. So this is how we get from operating income to cash flow. Then once we have our cash flow, each year we can see our cash flow, then we can do our uh, net present value. Make this money into, from future money to today's money. We can add them together and see whether we should take the project or not. So, we talked about the present value. So, net present value, net present value means 
what is the value in today's money? So we can see the definition here. It's the sum of the present values of all cash flows from the project, including the initial investment. So we sum together all of the cash flows, all of the money, cash coming in, all of the cash going out. Put it all to the today's value and get total. If the total is greater than zero, take the project. If the total is less than zero, don't take the project. Okay? So let's look at a very simple example. So we make a restaurant. So in the year zero, we have to spend 100, let's say, let's do with the green one, ILOC, right? ILOC, is that right? Yeah. Hmm? Then we have a year, let's say we're just running the restaurant for two years, just to make it easy, right? Year one and year two, okay? So, <laughs> year one, we make a profit of, uh, Oh, oh, ton, oh, ton, man, one. Is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> the next year, we make profit of eight, ton, man, one. Okay, this is our cash flow, cash flow, cash. We make this is our cash flow at the end of year one, cash flow at the end of year two. Okay, if we look at Disney's uh, details, this is the number, cash flow to firm. Okay, first year zero, we spend the money to start the project. Okay, year one, we start to get some revenue. Okay, in Disney's case, they have to wait two years because it's a theme park. But in our case, it's a restaurant. We, we pay the lease and we buy a kitchen in the first year. Okay. And then the next, we're just going to run the restaurant just for two years, and we make this profit. Okay, I want you to tell me, do the calculation, tell me, should we make the restaurant or not? Okay, so use the NPV. So this is the equation you need to use. Okay, cash flow over one plus the interest rate to the times time. So we know it's two years, let's say that the interest rate is 10%. Okay, the interest rate is 10%, or our mm -hmm. hurdle rate. So the bank is charging us, for example. Chris, could you tell us mm -hmm. in ordinary numbers what this is? Ah, uh, yes, you want to know? Yeah. Just, uh, this is 10, this is 5, and this is 8. So 10. We spend 10 in year 0, we get 5 in year 1, and we get 8 in year 2. Should I take the project or not? If we don't use net present value, we're going to say yes, this is minus 10 plus 5 plus 8. It's going to be plus 3. Okay, but we didn't think about the time value of money. So we have to make a calculation for this year and this year and add them together. So do that calculation now. You should be able to do that calculation. It's just simple present value, right? Find the simple present value of year one. Find the simple present value of year two. Add them together and subtract this. This is now, right? Can you do the simple present value calculation? This is simple present value. So who can tell me first whether we should do run the restaurant or not? So everybody should be doing this calculation. We need to find out Ochan Man 1 next year. How much is that worth today? Halchan Man 1 after two years. How much is that worth today? Okay? Everybody should be able to do that calculation. Add them together and subtract the investment. 
Can you uh, ask her to do this? She also needs to do this exercise. You need to take part in the class. Okay? You need to do the exercise. So everybody should be doing this way, right? Gear one, cash flow, five, over, one plus the interest rate, 1.1, gear one, here, time, gear two, eight, over, 1.1 squared equals, okay, everybody should have this calculation, okay, that is the simplest calculation we can do in time value of money. Okay, so what is the answer here? What number goes here? 4.5. What's the answer here? 6. 6.6. 6.6. So we add them together. 4.5 plus 6.6 .6 is? 11.1. 11.1 minus? Ten. Minus what? 10. 10, our initial investment. Equals? 1.1. 1.1. Okay. Should we take the investment or not? Yes. Is our the present value, net present value higher than our zero? Yes. Then yes. Take the, take the decision rule. If the net present value is greater than zero, then we accept the project. Okay, does that make sense? We're going to make profit from this restaurant. Okay? After our costs, after we pay our salary, including my own salary, I already get my salary, right? We already counted our expenses. It's going to be positive. What if I change this? What if I change this to 6, what's going to happen? If I change this one to 6, what's going to happen? Here two, how much money will we get? Can anybody tell me, what will be the answer here? 4.9? Four point? Four point nine. It's going to be 9.4 minus 10, it's going to be minus 0.6. Are we going to take the project? No. Okay. If we look here, without using the time value of money, we would say, we invest the lock and we get Ochon and we get Yukchon. Yes, that's okay. But no, we have to think about the time value of money. This, we have to pay 10% interest, right? So we already calculate for this in the hurdle rate. So, we are going to, uh, using the hurdle rate, discount the cash flow and decide properly, is it worth to open the restaurant or not? Does anybody have any question about that? That's a simple net present value, but normally does a restaurant just last for two years? Or longer than two years? Hmm? How long was, if you start a restaurant, how many years do you expect to run the restaurant? Two years or more? More. How many? Two 
20, 20, 20. 20 years. So what's a more realistic situation? You'll be losing money. You lose money the first year, you lose money the second year. The third, fourth, fifth year you start to make money. Okay? Then uh, you can make for 10 years, right? Usually people make for 10 years and then plus, like with Disney, for 10 years. Okay? So we will, it's a longer way. Because the money is different every year, the cash flow is going to be different every year, we can't use annuity. We have to use simple present, simple cash flow for each year. It's a long way, right? We have to calculate for each year, calculate the, uh, what is that money worth in today's money, calculate the net present value overall. Another way we can look at the project is called the internal rate of return. So the internal rate of return is using the same data, but it is the discount rate that sets the net present value equals to zero. So what, what discount rate do you think, if we go back to our original, it was eight, it was uh, 1 1.1, 11.1. And uh, 6.5, 6.6. .6. So, if we go back to the original case, at what interest rate? What interest rate do you think that this would be zero? We need to change the interest rate. Do we need to move the interest rate up or down? If we move the interest rate down, are we going to make more profit or less profit? Is the NPV going to be higher or lower if we move down the interest rate? Higher. Let's try and see. Let's make the interest rate 5%. Okay, now make the calculation with the interest rate at 5%. So you're going to have 1.05 here, 1.05 here. Okay, can anybody tell me what's this number? Is it going to be higher or lower than 4.5? Higher. So what's the number? 4.7. 4.7. What about this number here? Seven point three. Seven point eight. So 4.7 and 7.8 will be uh, 12.5. Our NPV will be 2.5. Okay? So if we make the interest rate lower, are we going to make more profit or less profit? Will our NPV be higher or lower? Higher. Does that make sense? Do you want to pay high interest or low interest? You want to pay lower interest, right? So if we want this number to be zero. If this number is going to be zero, what do I need to put here? What percent? What do you think? Have a guess. Hmm? One percent? We already did with 10, 1.1, 1 .1, and it, the answer was 1.1. .1. We want this number to be zero. Do we have to increase this or decrease to make a zero? Decrease. Hmm? decrease. If I decrease, is this number going to get bigger or, or, or lower? So I want this number to be lower. Do I need to increase the interest rate or decrease the interest rate? Decrease. Decrease. Increase the interest rate. To what? How many percent do you think? What percent do you think this will be zero? Have a guess. At 10 percent, it was 1.1. 1 .1. At 5 percent, it's 2.5. Maybe 12 percent. It might be zero. So try it now with 12 percent. Is it going to be zero? If we make the interest rate 12 percent, will our NPV be zero? Can anybody tell me? Or close to zero? What will this number be? Hmm? 
4.46. What will this number be? 6.3. So it's going to be uh, 10, still 10.7. So we need to increase the interest rate more, right? So it's going to be about maybe 1.115, something like that, right? It might be zero. And 15% interest, our NPV might be around zero. So the internal rate of return is the discount rate that sets the net present value equals to zero. Let's just say in this case, 15%. At 15%, the NPV will be zero. So this will be, if we have an interest rate of 15%, the NPV will be zero. If we use this discount rate. So if the discount rate is 15% and the NPV is zero, what are we going to compare this number to, to decide whether to take the project or not? We just calculated this one, the discount rate at which NPV is zero. So how are we going to just use the IRR to decide whether to take the project? What are we going to <coughs> compare that to? What will we compare this number to? Can anybody tell me? This is not our interest rate. This is, we just calculate it backwards, right? What discount rate makes the NPV zero? We got our answer, 15%. So what do we need to compare this to? The hurdle, our hurdle rate. If our hurdle rate is higher than 15, should we take the project? No, if our hurdle rate is lower than 15, should we take the project? Yes. Yes, okay, so. NPV and internal rate of return, we're using the same data, but just a little bit different way of deciding whether to take the project. NPV is simpler. Okay, internal rate of return, we need to do a complicated equation to find out what this number is. Okay, because we have more than one year. Actually, we can't do this on the calculator. We need to use a computer program. If I asked you what number goes here to make zero, that's a very complicated equation. Okay? We have to try all the different numbers. So we need to use a computer program. So IRR, we have to use a computer program. The computer software will tell us what is the uh, discount rate at which NPV is zero. We still have to calculate all the cash flows every year. And then we find out the answer. Then the decision rate is decision rule is if the IRR, this one is higher than our hurdle rate, our hurdle rate was 10%, minus 10, so yes, it's higher. So we'll, we'll make 5% uh, extra a year, okay? So we'll take the project. So these are our two main rules, net present value and rate of return, internal rate of return. The main difference is NPV is measured in dollars. IRR is measured in percent. We're using the same data. Okay? Do you have any question about that? So, there's one thing that we didn't think about for the restaurant. In a project with a short life, you need to calculate a salvage value. So I invested 100 ILOC at the start of the restaurant. I made this profit in year one and this profit in year two, okay? What about at the end of the project? I'm not doing any business. I shut down my restaurant in year three. Do you think there's any income? Can I get any salvage value? Yes. What salvage value can I get from the restaurant? Property. Selling the equipment, sell the kitchen. Furniture. If I bought the kitchen for Yuk Chun Man Wan, how much will I get back? Hmm? Sam maybe that's a bit optimistic. Less than half price, right? Because if somebody buys a second hand kitchen, they'll probably pay 50%, right? Then you have to sell it to the intermediary, it's going to be 30%, okay? So you might get back 20 or 30%. You might get back another each on man one, okay? So we have to add on this too. Year three, each on man one. How much is that worth, okay? 
So for short projects, don't forget to do the solvent value. Okay. Then in a project with a very long life, like a theme park, uh, we also we can make a number for after 10 years because just doing the cash flow for 10 years is enough. After 10 years, we're not really sure. So we just make a general number for what we think will be our income after 10 years, including the salvage value and future income. So a theme park, how long will a theme park last for? 30 years. How long? 30 years? Maybe more? How long is Disneyland in, in Florida been existing? Or Los Angeles? Maybe 40, 50 years, right? For a theme parks, it could be even longer. So we need to make some guess about this number after 10 years. We're not going to do the NPV year, year 25, year 26, year 27, year 28. It's too long. We just do that for 10 years, and we just make a number for after 10 years. So the question is, how do we make the number for after 10 years? First of all, the name for this number is terminal value. Okay, uh, this is the present value of all cash flows that occur from year 10 to year 50 or 60 or 70. Can we make a guess about how much money we'll be earning 70 years from now? No. It's not easy, right? Do we, do we really care about how much money we're making 70 years from now? No. Not really. Uh, probably we won't be here. Okay? So that's why most projects, the most important time is the first 10 years. Okay? Uh, it depends on the type of project, but the most important time, investors are usually thinking about 10 years. A lot can happen in 10 years. We could, oil price could go up a lot. The, uh, if you watch the movie Mad Max, did you watch the movie Mad Max? Yes. Everybody could be living like that in 15 years. What do you think? <laughs> You'll be living like Mad Max in 10, 15 years or 20 years? The point is, there's a lot of uncertainty about the long time into the future. So, we focus on the first 10 years, and then we make a number after 10 years. Who invests for longer than 10 years? Pension funds, those kind of things, right? They invest for longer than 10 years. But most investors focus on the first 10 years. So, for Disney, we calculate this terminal value. Okay, what do we do? We get uh, the cash flow in year 11 and divide it by the cost of capital minus the growth rate. So this is uh, the cash flow in year 11, 692. And uh, cost of capital minus the growth rate, we get a number. So <clears throat> we are just putting in something here like uh, taking into account the growth rate every year. So our cost of capital is 8%, the growth rate is going to be 2%. So we get this number in the end. So we have, this is the cash flow table for Disney. Year 0, year 1, year 2, year 3, year 4, year 5, year 6, year 10. Notice in year 10 we have the terminal value. It's much higher. Terminal value is much higher, right? Then my year because we expect that the cash, the park will keep going, keep going and going. So we have a very high number here. Okay. So if I discount these, do you want to do this calculation by yourself? Year zero, all the cash flows. Or do you want to just look here? Which do you want to do? Do you want me to ask you to do this for every year for Disney? Practicing? No. On your calculator, you also have some, they have some function for finding the NPV, net present value, right? So some calculators have the button. So you just type in the number and the year and press the percent, right? You can program the calculator. So this is the present value of Disney's cash flows every year, okay? Do you understand what equation did we use to find 692 million or 660 million in year 9 is worth 313 million in year 0? Okay? 
what equation did we use to find that? We put 606 over, 660 over 1 point, Disney's cost of capital was 0 0.86, okay, to the power of 9. If you do this calculation, then we should get 313 here, okay? So we add together all of these things, and we get our net present value, 2.877. So should we take this project or not? Should Disney take this project or not? Yes, the net present value is greater than zero. For the restaurant, our net present value was positive, 1.1, okay? Net present value of all our cash flows is greater than zero, then take the project. But earlier when we looked at the accounting returns, we decided not to take the project. Can you remember? We calculated just using accounting returns, not using the cash flow. We said don't take the project, okay? But now we're using the cash flow, we added in some extra things, okay? Uh, we calculated more accurately according to the cash flow. Like, for example, the fixed and general and administrative cost was included in the accounting returns but not included in the cash flow. We didn't include this big number in the, cash, in the accounting returns. The cash flows at the end of the project. So, we can see that it's different. So, which do you think is better to do the, the calculation for returns in cash or in accounting returns? Which is better? Like this in cash or in accounting returns? What do you think is a better way? Which one do you trust more? Accounting returns says don't do the project. Cash says do the project. Which one do you trust more? Cash. Cash, why? Hmm? It's more real, right? It's real money. Accounting, they're doing some tricks with depreciation and so on to save tax, okay? But we want to change those things into cash. And also, we want to eliminate the sunk cost, which accounting returns doesn't eliminate the sunk cost or the GNA and those kind of things. So cash calculation is better. So do you have any question about this, this part? The NPV? So Disney is going to do its project in Brazil then, okay? It's decided, yes, I'll make, I'll lose money. The first three years, I'll lose money, okay? But after three years, I'll start making money. And then all the cash I can make will be higher than the uh, cash I have to invest. So we get a dollar value. So the project should be accepted. The positive net present value suggests that the project will add value to the company and earn a return in excess of the cost of capital. By taking the project, Disney will increase its value as a firm by uh, 2 billion. Okay. So, do you think the stock price will go up if Disney takes this project? Yes. Maybe, right? Anyway, investors expect Disney to, make, to take projects which are profitable. Okay? So stockholders want Disney to take projects which are profitable. So they may expect, they expect that anyway, so that's already included in the stock price. But if it's an extremely profitable project, then uh, yes, the stock price can go up more, right? Somebody gave me an example. Uh, she's not here today, but she said she was doing some uh, practice investing online, just practice with fake money. She said that the CGV stock price will go up because Avengers, they have Avengers movie, right? So she thought that the project was very good, the, making the movie Avengers. So she said, this project will be a very good project. She thought the revenue would be very high. A lot of people would go to see the movie. So she wants to buy more stock in, in uh, CGV, okay? the cinema company. Do you agree with her? 
Do you think that the Avengers will be very popular? Did you see the Avengers movie? The new one? Yes? Which do you prefer, Mad Max or Avengers? You're all young, the people, right? You prefer Avengers. Do you like the superheroes? Do you have a picture in your bedroom of Hulk? Hulk on one side, Captain America the other side. Your bed clothes, bed clothes is uh, Spider-Man. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> so, for the internal rate of return, we can also do for the Disney theme park. We need to use the computer software. Computer software will tell us the answer. We put in the cash flow on each year. We put in the information into the software. And it tells us that the internal rate of return will be 13%. Our cost of capital is 8.6%. So cost of capital is lower than the internal rate of return. So take the project. So if we do the computer software, we'll get this kind of graph, which will tell us uh, about what percent, if we have, if our cost of capital is here, we'll make this NPV. If our cost of capital is very high, we'll make this NPV. So what we can see is that when we have a low interest rate, there's more difference in the line. When we have a very high cost of capital, it's going to be not much difference. Okay, whether we take, whether it costs 21% or 30%, not much difference. But if the difference between our cost of capital of, of 8%, 9%, 10% is bigger. <coughs> so, anyway, the computer program tells us that this 13% is the internal rate of return. So the internal rate of return says the project is a good one. This project provides a return of 12.535%. That is greater than the cost of capital. Okay, so the IRR and the MPV yield similar results, same results. IRR says yes, MPV says yes, okay? Uh, so which do you prefer? Do you prefer to, to use percentage value or cash value compared to zero? What do you prefer? Comparing to percent or comparing to cash value per com to zero? Compared to zero. Both of them. You like both of them? Yeah. Do both of them anyway? And see what happens? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, it's always good to do both things, right? But usually the NPV is more widely used. So, uh, let's discuss with your partner. So we did this, uh, we did this calculation in dollars. If we had done this calculation in Brazilian reals, in the Brazilian currency, would the conclusion be different? Yes or no? So does it make any difference, the currency in which we do the calculation? What do you think? We calculated our revenues and costs in dollars, or we calculate our revenue and costs in Brazilian real? Is this going to change our conclusion at the end, to invest in the project or not to invest in the project? Discuss with your partner. It doesn't matter which currency we do our calculation in. Will we get the same answer anyway if we do it in euros or yen or pounds or dollars? Or will the answer be different? Okay, so let's have a show of hands. Who thinks that it's going, the conclusion will be different, that maybe we'll find out 
No, don't invest in the project. So who thinks the conclusion will be different if we use a different currency? Who thinks the conclusion will be the same if we use a different currency? So we have to have a guess. Maybe only 10 people put up their hand. So have a guess. Our conclusion is take the project. Okay? The MPB is positive, the IRR is high. But we did our calculation in dollars. So if we change the calculation to another currency like Brazilian real, do you think that our conclusion will be different? Hands up if you think the conclusion will be different. Yes. Okay, hands up if you think no, the conclusion will be the same no matter what currency we use. Okay, let's try again. Some people are not putting up their hands. Yes, the, the conclusion will be, or sorry, the conclusion will be different. The conclusion will be different. The conclusion will be the same. It doesn't matter about the currency. Okay, so why did you say it's going to be the same? Because uh, if the project is good, it should be good, uh, doesn't matter what currency. Uh, yes, okay, just the currency, the difference is the exchange rate. And we could have a difference in inflation in the future. Right, that could cause a problem, but normally the exchange rate follows inflation. Does the exchange rate follow inflation? In Russia, if inflation is very high, the Russian real is, the Russian current ruble is going to get weaker yeah. against the dollar. So usually the currency follows inflation. So even if we have inflation in Brazil, then the Brazilian real will get weaker. So the effect is going to cancel out. So it doesn't matter which currency we do, the equation is the calculation is. Okay? Over the long term, over 10 years, there is a strong relationship between exchange rate and inflation. So if one currency has high inflation, it's going to get correspondingly weaker. So it doesn't matter about the currency. We do this calculation in Brazilian reals, we're going to get the same answer. Okay, do you have any question about that? If we, get, if we have inflation, our income will be higher. Our cost will also be higher. Right? Uh, maybe our profit will be higher. But we take our profit back to the US. The exchange rate is going to be weaker. So we're going to get less US dollars back. Right? So as the inflation goes up, we make more profit. Great. Right? But our profit is in Brazilian real. And we need to change that back to US dollars. So the exchange rate is going to get weaker. So we are going to get the same US dollars back anyway, in the end. So it doesn't make any difference. Okay? So does that any more questions? Then let's take a break now for ten minutes.